Hello everyone, welcome to Pharmacy Lectures. Today we are going to discuss caffeine biosynthesis or how plants produce caffeine. First, uh, let's see the structure of caffeine. Here we can see the structure of caffeine is composed of two electrocyclic rings. One is a six member electrocyclic ring, while the other is five member electrocyclic ring. The one ring uh, we can call it pyrimidine ring and the another ring it is imidazole ring so there is the fusion of pyrimidine and imidazole ring in the structure of caffeine and this is not only pyrimidine it is a substituted pyrimidine because there is a keto another keto one methyl another methyl and this imidazole is also a substituted imidazole we can see here is a methyl substitution in imidazole uh, this was the basic structure of caffeine uh, now let's see uh, caffeine is a bitter as most of the alkaloids are caffeine is also a bitter alkaloid we can call it alkaloid because we can see uh, it is a natural product derivative and another it contains nitrogen in heterocyclic ring and that's why uh, due to uh, these two points one it is a natural product uh, especially produced by plants and another it contains nitrogen uh, that's why uh, we can call it alkaloid it is a white crystalline purine it is a purine derivative here you can see the structure of purine it consists of a pyrimidine ring and a imidazole ring fused to each other this is the basic structure of purine and this same type of ring structure we can also see in caffeine and we can also call it a methyl xanthine alkaloid because in xanthine we can see this is the basic structure of xanthine uh, basically xanthine is a you can see if there is a keto group the presence of keto group in purine then we can call it xanthine and uh, in xanthine and in caffeine we can see here are various methyl groups so caffeine is a methyl xanthine alkaloid and thus closely related to the adenine and guanine and adenine and guanine are also purine type of compound we can see in adenine and in guanine we can see the same type of ring structure in adenine also there is pyrimidine and imidazole in guanine also there is pyrimidine and imidazole but there are some basic differences of amino and keto group the ring structure is same and these two adenine and guanine are dna bases contained in the deoxyribonucleic acid now let's see the biological source of caffeine first cola beans it is obtained from seeds of theobroma cacao family sterculiaceae second cola nuts uh, these are the cola nuts and from the name cola the coca cola gets its name caffeine containing nut of cola acuminata and cola nitida trees of the cocoa family sterculiaceae same family now see uh, third biological source it is tea leaves tea leaves also contain caffeine basically uh, tea leaves contain theophylline and caffeine it also contains caffeine the botanical name of tea is camellia sinensis and the biological source of tea is prepared leaves and leaf buds of it it belongs to the family theaceae coffee beans coffee also contain caffeine the botanical name of coffee is coffee arabica named by Linnaeus. it belongs to the family rubiaceae now let's study the biosynthesis of caffeine uh, caffeine can be biosynthesized from adenine or guanine or uh, nucleotide biosynthesis de novo, de novo D 
protein over nucleotide biosynthesis from these these three can be the basic primary source of raw material for caffeine biosynthesis in plants first let's start with adenine adenine goes into the adenine, adenine nucleotide in a nucleotide pool in adenine nucleotide pool there are adenosine monophosphate adenosine diphosphate adenosine triphosphate amp adp and atp and cyclic amp also is there and from here uh, amp is the source for synthesis of or biosynthesis of caffeine amp stands for adenosine monophosphate dp stands for diphosphate and atp stands for triphosphate the caffeine biosynthesis occurs from amp and this amp uh, gets converted into imp or inosine monophosphate the same compound this inosine monophosphate can also be prepared from this de novo nucleotide biosynthesis where the nucleic acids so the dna bases the dna bases gets prepared from basic very uh, uh, very basic chemical structures uh, if the dna bases uh, gets converted from very basic chemical structures then uh, the whole the biosynthesis pathway is called a de novo biosynthesis pathway if uh, uh, for example if amp gets converted into adp and it gets converted into atp and again it gets converted into amp uh, if there is a cycle going on then it is not called the de novo biosynthesis it is called a recycling process where the inosine monophosphate or adenosine monophosphate amp gets converted from yeah gets prepared from basic starting material then it will be called uh, de novo nucleotide biosynthesis or de novo synthesis and next let's see uh, what happens in guanine uh, guanine uh, this guanine molecule uh, it also gets involved in the guanine nucleotide pool and there are like amp adp and atp there are also guanosine monophosphate, guanosine triphosphate, guanosine and diphosphate. And among these uh, chemicals, the raw material for synthesis of caffeine is guanosine monophosphate, like it is in uh, adenine, adenosine monophosphate. And this guanosine monophosphate first gets converted into XMP, xanthosine monophosphate, and then only it gets converted into sorry and then it convert, gets converted into another molecule now let's see the xanthosine monophosphate gets converted into xanthosine here we have to understand one thing here xanthosine monophosphate and here is only xanthosine means the phosphate group is removed in this step next xanthosine gets converted into 7-methyl xanthosine or 1 group of methyl is added to this xanthosine molecule next 7 methyl xanthine means xanthosine the word xanthosine okay the word xanthosine is derived from uh, two things xanthine if xanthine is attached to ribose sugar if xanthine is attached to ribose sugar then the new molecule will be called xanthosine if adenine is attached to okay if adenine is attached to ribose sugar then it shall be called adenosine if guanine is attached to ribose sugar it is called guanosine similarly xanthosine means uh, xanthine plus ribose sugar so what happens in this step in this step ribose sugar is cleaved off so there is 7 methyl xanthine next uh, 7 methyl xanthine gets converted to theobromine. One methyl group is added, and theobromine gets converted into caffeine. One more methyl group is added, and the caffeine biosynthesis is finished. Now, let's see the this whole process. I'll just start with this. I'll go in this process from adenine 
I will go towards the caffeine. I will not go uh, here towards guanine. Uh, it will be quite similar. Okay, let's start the biosynthesis of caffeine from adenine with chemical structures. Uh, adenine uh, goes into the adeno, adenine nucleotide pool and gets converted into adenosine monophosphate and uh, let's see the difference what's the difference between adenine and adenosine monophosphate first uh, closely look at the word adenine and adenosine uh, this molecule okay this molecule it contains adenine ring this is the adenine group and this is the ribose sugar and these two adenine and ribose sugar uh, adenine plus ribose sugar it shall be called adenosine and there is an extra phosphate group here so that's why it is called adenosine monophosphate the next uh, amp d aminase or adenosine monophosphate deaminase. Here we can see what happened. This amine group is cleaved off and there is a key to functional group. Okay. At position number, this is generally position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is position number 6. At position number 6, the amine group of adenosine monophosphate is cleaved off and there is a presence of now keto group the reaction is carried out by enzyme amp d aminase and now the new molecule it will be called inosine monophosphate so this molecule this molecule as a whole it is inosine okay next let's see inosine monophosphate uh, in presence of enzyme imp dehydrogenase imp it stands for inosine monophosphate and the word is here dehydrogenase generally uh, where you you will see these words dehydrogenase most of the times there is oxidation reaction going on okay now let's see is there oxidation reaction going on or not yes of course there is oxidation reaction going on at position number one position number two this is this carbon position number two at position number two what is happening oxygen group is getting attached to position number two carbon and one more important thing here is a hydrogen group or hydrogen atom that hydrogen atom is removed so most of the times where you see the word dehydrogenase uh, there you will see oxidation reaction going on here also there is same thing and the new molecule uh, what it is called this is inosine monophosphate and now this new molecule is xanthosine monophosphate where there is oxygen atom or oxo group at position number 2 and position number 6 now let's see what's up, what happens now we can see here uh, this xanthosine monophosphate is converted into xanthosine means what is missing here phosphate is missing here here we can see the phosphate group is missing the phosphate group is cleaved off in this step and a xanthosine monophosphate is converted to xanthosine the next step uh, let's see what happening here uh, xanthosine here it is 7 methyl xanthosine means at position number 7 there is a extra methyl group then uh, it used that then it used to be in xanthosine so let's see where is position number 7 Question number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and this is question number 7. This nitrogen, okay. This nitrogen is question number 7. At question number 7, there is a methyl group. There is extra methyl. That is, it is called 7 methyl xanthosine. Okay, the same molecule, 7 methyl xanthosine. In presence of some nucleoside is generally uh, first uh, before uh, uh, understanding what will go on here first let's understand what a nucleoside is before starting uh, with a nucleoside is first you must know what a nucleoside okay what a nucleoside is 
generally a nucleoside is a molecule composed of two things okay one is a dna or rna base okay one is a base it can be dna base or rna base and another it is ribose sugar another it is ribose sugar if some molecule contains these two things uh, dna base and ribose sugar then it shall be called nucleoside and the enzyme which cleaves this which separates this base and ribose sugar such enzyme shall be called nucleosidase here also nucleosidase does same thing here it will cleave here it will make a separation between this base and this ribose sugar these two will get separated from each other let's see if this happens yes now what happens here here ribose sugar is gone from this molecule it is 7 methyl xanthosine now this molecule is 7 methyl xanthine previously it was a nucleoside now it is not a nucleoside now it is just a base now let's see uh, what's next now 7 methyl xanthine in presence of SAM uh, generally SAM is a cofactor it stands for Yes, adenosyl methionine. It will provide methyl group. Generally, this SAM provides methyl group. In most of the biotransformation reaction or phase two metabolism, also this molecule SAM provides methyl group. Here also same thing to provide methyl group and methylation will be done in presence of some enzyme. Okay, where the methyl group is attached here in this new molecule in theobromine, the First, the methyl group is attached at position number 1, this is position number 2, this is position number 3, at position number 3, the methyl group is attached. Okay. This is theobromine. Now, to be, to make this structure, theobromine, a structure of caffeine, or to convert this theobromine into caffeine, we must methylate this nitrogen also, position number 1 nitrogen also. And it will be also methylated by same process, this same cofactor SAM and some enzyme theobromine in presence of SAM as adenosine methionine gets converted into caffeine and we can see the structure of caffeine is ready for plants <clears throat> so this was all uh, uh, about the biosynthesis of caffeine I have just showed you uh, that biosynthesis from adenine okay the biosynthesis can also be from guanine or it can be started from nucleotide biosynthesis de novo from your inosine monophosphate okay i have shown you from adenine adenine nucleotide pool amp xmp xanthosine xenomethyl xanthosine xenomethyl xanthine theobromine and caffeine so if you have any questions uh, regarding this uh, biosynthesis or if you have any other questions regarding this caffeine please comment below okay so thank you for watching uh, see you in next video